Linda here from Gunnut Lane Jewelry. Um, today we're going to be doing um, a couple more links. Everybody seems to be enjoying the links so I thought I would show you a couple more that I use in uh, quite a bit of my jewelry in the chains. So the first one up is, and this is also carrying on from our um, live that we did last week, um, where we did the the wrapped um, links for your jewelry pieces. So this is a, a wrapped link in the same, done in the same style, just uh, done as a um, a link for a chain. So this one I've patinaed. I haven't finished cleaning it and polishing it or anything yet. Um, I've just uh, gone over it once, so it's still a bit dark. But this is the link that we're going to be doing. So I'll show you that in in the bare copper as well get a look at that I think it looks quite nice and when it's all polished up when it's finished it looks beautiful so that's done in a 24 gauge wire I've also done just a couple of links here to show you in the 22 gauge so just to give it a little bit of a thicker look and now I've done uh, just one link and this is in a 20 gauge obviously that a little bit harder to um, to wrap than the 22 and the 24 but still it's it's got a very effective look to it um okay so that's that's the first link the next link that we'll be doing is a an oval link um this one i've hammered uh with the ball peen part of my hammer to give it the little um indentations in it so we'll be making that and then the third one is this one here that sort of looks a bit like a bow but not so you can see that in in the full chain there and I've just finished that up, up at the end with just uh, normal chain links that I made to go around the back of your neck so it's more comfortable to wear okay so to, uh, what we're going to need we're going to start off with our 24 gauge wire so I'm just going to um, grab my technology here. Oops, things falling everywhere. <coughs> um, as most of you know, I just eyeball everything. So I'll cut a piece that I think is the right length and I'll give you the measurement. Okay, so roughly about that long. Mine are never always exactly the same. Uh, Lay my tape measure out, and we've got. If I straighten it, it might work a bit better. Uh, Seventeen centimeters there, which is um, what's that? Six and three quarter inches. So just roughly, it doesn't have to be exact measurement. Okay, I'm just gonna dig in here and find my around those pliers okay so I'm just going to come down a little way just you know so far and I don't want to have a big loop here so I'm just there on my ply my around those pliers and I'm just going to make a loop just like that and got my flap nose pliers and I'm just going to wrap that around. You don't have to be um, fussy about this. You don't have to worry that your wraps aren't neat or anything. Just it's a messy um, link anyway. So let's get that as far as you can. Grab your cutters. Cut off that little bit extra there. Just squish it down. You don't have to worry about that too much either, just so that that points out of the way. Okay, grabbing around those pliers again 
and I'm pretty much coming down on top of that coil if you can see that there and I'm just going to make a wrap loop again bring that around flat nose pliers you can do it on your round nose pliers if you like. I just um, always feel khaki handed when I'm doing it that way. And I'm just going to start wrapping. And I'm just wrapping willy nilly, just wherever I want to. Move my pliers up a little bit so I can get in there. Just wrap as much as you like. When you like the look of it, you can stop that in a bit tighter some will be fatter than the others it doesn't matter it just adds all interest to your piece and hold on to this goodness try to hold on to it and show you at the same time as a whole other thing a slippery little thing I'm just going to cut that piece off. I could have kept wrapping that last little bit, but and just find where your burr is, so push it down into the work, just so you bury it in there. And that's our first link. Now I'll do one more of those. Again, just coming down a little way doesn't have to be too accurate making your loop wrapping that bit around until you can't wrap it anymore and trim off what you what's left that piece down and I said you don't have to be too worried about it because it's all going to be buried anyway you just don't want any sharp bits sticking up anywhere flatten those pliers again coming down on top of almost on top of your, your loop that you just made If you want to make these longer of course you'd go up higher on your wire and make a longer loop you could do that as well that could look very interesting so just winding around like that just until what you think is pleasing to your eye that burr. Now I probably won't be able to find it. There it is, I can see it. Amazing, I can see it. Pushing that down into the work. And you can just muck around like I am with my pliers now, just pushing it in more into shape if you want to, if you're not real happy with the shape that you've got. And I just realized I was going to join those two together. Never mind, I'll make one more. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, what I should have done was join it in. Join it in when I got to this stage.
Okay, and now I'll add that other one on. Come on, get around there. Just winding your wire around. in that bird. So you can't feel it. Okay, well that's three quick links that we made there. And I can join that onto my other chain there. So that's our first link. I hope you all like that. If you do, please let me know down below in the comments or give me a like. Um, okay, we'll move on to the to the overlink now. Okay, I have this. Um, I had I bought this uh, pack that had different mandrel things in it with a thing that you twist on the end, but I'm not exactly sure how to, it didn't come with any instructions. And I bought it quite a few years ago, and maybe it did come with instructions, and I've lost them. But um, I just use the mandrels like this because I, I I'm pretty sure it's some sort of wire co um, coiler, but I can't figure out how to, to use it with the little handle thing that it's got. But anyway, this is what I wrapped my loops on. But what I thought, if you don't have anything like this, a nail file. So what I noticed is that it's pretty much the same, same width up this end here. So you could wrap your loops on, on that. You'd get a lot uh, finer ones because this is thicker on the side, up to you. Also to... If you wanted to go bigger, something like this, or um, if you wanted something more exact the same size and pretty much the same thickness, you can get those other emery boards that are um, narrower. So you could use something like that. Just a couple of ideas for you. All right, so I'm going to use uh, 18 gauge on this one. You could use uh, 20, um, 16, um, I wouldn't probably go, I could probably go 22, you could probably do that. So I'm just going to try and get some of this off here. Doesn't matter how much you cut off, it's just up to you how many links you think you're going to need. Okay, I'm just going to give that wire a bit of a straighten, a bit of a warm up. Okay, I'm just grabbing my, well, this might be a bit hard with under the camera. Try not to whack it. Got a bit of maneuvering here. Okay, so I'm just going to get that started there. And then I found it the easiest way. So once you get it started, you just twist the mandrel rather than trying to wrap the wire, especially with a thicker gauge. So still try and get them as close together as you can but pushing that wire down as well that while you're twisting so pushing it flat against the mandrel you can see what I'm doing there I'm pushing that down with my thumb as I'm turning it around on all sides. And that'll do, I cut off way too much wire there. Okay, now you can just slide that off. 
and you're probably going to lose a little bit of wire on each side here because we're going to cut down the middle but hopefully you won't lose too much oops wrong way around so flush side going back towards your work you can pull them out a little bit if they're too close and we're cutting in the middle of our long side Ooh, that one went flying. That hit my fan. <laughs> okay, turning your um, flush cutters around. Cut that first one off. Turning them over again. Two. Turning them over again. getting a little bit high up if you start to go too far up the other end then you're going to have to cut a little bit more off trying to keep it in the middle Okay, I didn't waste that much wire. All right, there are our links, and you've got your, your join on the side there, which obviously makes it a, a stronger uh, link because it's not pulling where your um, join would normally be on a normal link. would On a round one, would spin around and be at the top or bottom, and that's where the force is. So this type of link is a, is a good link um, strength-wise. Okay, now I didn't bring over my... Uh, metal hammer so I'm just going to um, strengthen these with my rubber mallet so I'm just going to give those a good, good bang on each side I'll just do three. Okay, got my three there. Put those ones aside. And grabbing my flat nose and bent nose. <coughs> Excuse me. We're just going to. Bring those together. If you hear that click noise, I always just like to reinforce mine on the side. So this one we're going to open up just by turning that way. So you're opening it outways, joining that in. Bring those two back together. You hear that click there? That means it's closed well. last one and bringing those back together okay so that makes it a lovely link just like that or as I said with the um, with the hammered look on it and you could add that in as I've done with um, many chains that I've done, you could have, uh, say, that many links. But you could even have some hammered and some not, like this is here. Add something like that into it, then a few more of your... <coughs> Excuse me. These ones aren't hammered or anything like that, of course. I just made them. But just uh, showing you... You could add something like that on the end of it and just uh, then again add that up there just to vary it up a little bit so that was just a quick link for you showing you how to make an oval link okay the last one we're making is our bow sort of shaped 
Well, it's not really, I don't know, twiggy looking, I guess it looks like a bunch of twigs wrapped together. Okay, for that we need 24 gauge wire. And I want a fair bit of this, so I'll cut off what I think and then I'll measure it for you. Again, just a rough idea. It doesn't have to be exact because you can make these as big or as little as you like. This is going to be hard to measure. I might have, I'll measure it off camera here because I won't be able to get that under the camera. Okay, that measures uh, just over 21 and a half inches, which is about 55 uh, centimetres. Okay, now I'm going to need my um, six step mandrel. Okay, I'm leaving a. Um, I've got to stop and think how I made this now. Yeah, I'm leaving a tail on the end there, like this. And I'm just going to start wrapping around. I had to move myself out of the way then so I could get my wire around. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to go around a few times. As many as you like. I'm trying to, I didn't even have that on camera then. I hope you could see that. Sorry. It's just um, very hard to manipulate this wire under the camera. All right, got to there. Easiest way to get them off is just close your pliers up like that. I'm just going to, you can do it with your fingers or you can just grab your flat nose pliers. Just give that a bit of a smoosh in the middle, not too, you don't have to go over it, overboard with it, just a little bit. I'm grabbing this uh, wire here, that the shorter end that we had at the start. And I'm just going to wrap that around. Use your pliers if it gets a bit tough to do. You can do this as many times as you want as well. This is very free form. It's um, organic, free form, chaotic, whatever you want to call it. I don't like wasting wire, so I'll do it as many times as I think. Cut that end off. Give it a smoosh down. Bury that in between your coils. Okay, now with this other one, we're just going to bring it down. You can bring it wherever you like, front, back, whatever. Doesn't matter which way you do it. And we're just going to wrap that around. And don't be worried. Don't you know like. It's not meant to be nice and neat. You can make it neat if you want, but that's not the point of it. Cut that end off. Again, push that down in the middle. And then you can just give it a swoosh around. I'm going to grab my round nose pliers. I've got hold of the end of that wire there, so I'm grabbing my flat nose pliers as well. If I can get up there.
get a better hold on it. Actually, I'm going to smush it in with my fingers a bit first, make it easier to get my pliers around it. Just give that a bit of shape up the top. I'm making this look harder than it is. It's not hard at all. It's just difficult to do it on camera. I can't get the right angles. There we go, that's a bit better. And push that back down again. to grab my bent nose pliers I promise it is not this hard when you don't have a camera in your face all right now I'm just going to give these wires all of a bit of a twist So they don't look so neat. Okay, that was looking pretty good to me. So I'm just going to grab my bench block and my rubber mallet. I'm just going to give those a good uh, pounding. This is to strengthen them and also to flatten them out a little bit. And then you can just fiddle with it. I'm just going to I want it to look interesting when it's on a piece. I don't even mind that little bit sticking out there. I think that's quite nice. So like, it's basically finished. I'm just fiddling with it now to um, make it look a little bit more interesting. And I'll give it another little hammer just to set it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe just move that in a little bit. Okay, so that's a link there, which is this one on here that I showed you before, although a little bit different. But it doesn't matter, as I said, you can fiddle around with them. I could fiddle around with this one a little bit more. I can push that in more. I could sit here and play with it all day. So that's even more interesting now. And then just give it another, another hammer. Okay, so that's another link. So then you just um, 
as I have here, just uh, I just added a jump ring on each end and you can hook it into whatever you um, want to hook it into. Once it's um, uh, patinaed and uh, polished up. Now I'm really playing, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, you can just do whatever, whatever you um, you want to do. Actually, I think that's very interesting. Once that's patinaed and polished, it's going to look beautiful. So I'm going to see if I can get a few more to look a little bit more like, like it, fat. Um, fatter if that's the only word I can think of in the middle rather than um there's one here rather than thin like that I think that's interesting I mean I like both of them but I think this one I can I can just imagine it patinaed and polished up in a piece that would look beautiful okay well that's um that's that video done for today so I hope you enjoyed those um please let me know in the comments if you liked it or not um and yeah any thoughts you have any questions you have please leave down below don't forget to um like and share and subscribe if you haven't um and that's all for me for today so i'll catch you all in the next video everyone have a good one bye